Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be going over the lymphomas. I'm going to be covering the difference between the uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, you guys know you're going to love this video, so please support my channel. Go ahead, like this video now. Press that red notification button so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. And be sure after the video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Um, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And almost every single day, you guys can find me covering a variety of nursing topics on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. So, okay, guys, let's get started. We're going to be talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma first, but let's actually start on lymphomas. Let's see what it says. Lymphomas are malignant neoplasms. Let me stop right there. When you see that word malignant, something can be malignant or it can be benign. When it says malignant, that means harmful, okay? If something is benign, um, it's there. It's not really harmful. It's not going to kill you, but malignant can, okay? It's a malignant neoplasma originating in the bone marrow and lymphatic structures resulting in proliferation of lymphocytes. What does proliferation mean? That means something that builds up very rapidly. So increasing rapidly of lymphocytes. What are lymphocytes? Lymphocytes are type of what? WBC. So you have all of these WBCs um, that are being produced very rapidly. So let's keep going. Let's start with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I put a happy face. The reason I put a happy face is because the prognosis for Hodgkin's lymphoma is much better than non-Hodgkin. So I kind of put a happy face there just to kind of remind you that the Hodgkin, the, the, that with the Hodgkin's lymphoma, the prognosis is better, okay? So let's take a look. I think I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. There we go. Give me a sec, guys. I'm going to put myself on focus as well so we don't get disturbed. Okay. So um, let's look what it says. Uh, it's characterized by, again, proliferation of abnormal giant multinucleated cells. And these are known as Reed Sternberg cells, and they're located in the lymph nodes. When you see Read Sternberg cells, I need you to think of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, that's why I put a star next to it. Remember that. Read Sternberg cells, that goes with right here, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which the prognosis is better than non Hodgkin's. All right, let's keep going. The main interacting factors include, so we're talking about the, uh, the etiology and pathophysiology. The main interacting factors include infection with Epstein-Barr virus, a genetic predisposition and exposure to occupational toxins. I underlined that Epstein-Barr virus because when it comes to Hodgkin's lymphoma, there are just a couple things that you're most likely to be tested on because I see it over and over and over and over again. And Epstein-Barr virus is one of them. So you need to know that as um, um, it main interacting factors. The incidence of Hodgkin's lymphoma is increased in patients who have HIV infection. So those patients who have HIV infection, those patients who have AIDS, they're severely immunocompromised they're in a position for opportunistic um, infections, opportunistic diseases, and Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of them, okay? The normal structure of lymph nodes is destroyed by hyperplasia. Remember, these lymphocytes are growing at a rapid rate, but the problem is they're abnormal. They're abnormal lymphocytes. Look what it says. Normal structure of the lymph nodes is destroyed by hyperplasia of monocytes and macrophages. The main diagnostic feature of Hitch Hodgkin's lymphoma is the presence of what? There we go again, Reed Sternberg cells. When you see Reed Sternberg cells, you need to be thinking of Hodgkin's lymphoma, okay? 
The main diagnostic, so this is how we diagnose it. This is how we know you have Hodgkin's and not something else. The main diagnostic feature of Hodgkin's lymphoma is the presence of Reed Sternberg cells in the lymph node uh, biopsy specimens. So they're going to biopsy a portion of that lymph node. And if they see those Reed Sternberg cells, they know that's Hodgkin's lymphoma. Signs and symptoms. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. The patient may notice weight loss, fatigue, weakness, fever, chills, tachycardia, or night sweats. A group of initial findings include fever being higher than 100.4 degrees, drenching night sweats, so they're sweating so much, they're drenching all the sheets in the bed, and weight loss. After the ingestion of even small amounts of alcohol, individuals with Hodgkin's lymphoma may complain of a rapid onset of pain at the site of the disease. So just drinking a little bit of wine, a little bit of beer, a little bit of alcohol, immediately after ingestion of that alcohol, they'll have pain wherever um, that uh, disease is. Generalized pruritus, that's itching. Generalized pruritus without skin lesions may develop. Cough, dyspnea, strider. By the way, guys, strider is a medical emergency, guys. Strider is the sound of air trying to get through an obstructed airway, okay? Cough, dyspnea, strider, dysphagia may all reflect mediastinal node involvement. Diagnostic and staging studies, peripheral blood ana analysis, ex excisional lymph node biopsy, bone marrow examination, and radiologic studies are important means of evaluating Hodgkin's lymphoma. But at the end of the day, what diagnoses it? Right here. The Reed Sternberg cells that are found in that lymph node biopsy. The standard for chemotherapy is a BVD regimen. Guys, you know I can't pronounce. I can't even speak. I'm not even going to try to. Am I going to try to pronounce these drugs? Yeah, let's try. Doxorubicin, bleomycin, vinblastin, and decarbazine. A, B, V, D. Those are the medications. Secondary cancers occur 10 years after treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So after that patient has been treated for the Hodgkin's lymphoma, there's very high chance the patient will get another cancer. The most common secondary malignancy are lung and breast cancer. Patients should have close follow-up and screening for early detection of these problems. You need to teach that patient, in addition to this, guys, um, the female patient, well, actually male, female, you need to teach them that, you know, at least every month while they're in the shower to go ahead and do what? That um, breast, um, self-breast examination. Because it is possible for males to also get breast cancer. Because the survival rate with Hodgkin's lymphoma depends on their response to treatment, supporting the patient through the consequences of treatment is extremely important. Why do they say consequences of treatment? Because remember when the treatment, those meds are very, very, very harsh, right? And they have lots of side effects and adverse effects. That's why they said consequences of treatment. They're going to need uh, support. Prognosis for Hodgkin's lymphoma is better than that for many forms of cancer. And that's why I put a happy face next to Hodg Hodgkin's lymphoma. Not that it's a good thing, but the prognosis just tends to be better. And so I want you to keep that in mind, okay? All right, guys, so let's switch gears. We talked about Hodgkin's lymphoma. We talked about the Reed Sternberg cells, right? Now we're gonna jump into non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Look what I put there. I put a sad face. Why? The... Um, prognosis is not very good for a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, okay? Let's jump into the etiology and pathophysiology. 
Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma does not have a hallmark feature that parallels the Reed-Sternberg because remember Reed-Sternberg, that is our classic, that is our hallmark symptom. That we see that, we know the patient has Hodgkin's lymphoma. But when it comes to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, there's not that one thing. Let's see if we come back. I'm sorry, guys, I get so excited. Forgive me. I won't do it again. There we go. All right. So um, with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, there is not that one thing to make us say, oh my gosh, this is what it is. All right. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma does not have hallmark feature that parallels the reed sternberg cells of Hodgkin's lymphoma. However, all non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, all non-Hodgkin's lymphomas involve lymphocytes arrested at various stages of development, and they may mimic leukemia. So every single form of that non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, we're going to see um, the lymphocytes, their development um, arrested at different stages, okay? And they may mimic that patient that has leukemia. By the way, I have a leukemia video coming up for you guys soon, so make sure you watch out for that. All right, signs and symptoms, clinical manifestations. The primary clinical manifestation is painless. Painless lymph node enlargement. Let me explain something to you guys. Hold on, let me get my coffee. <sighs> cancers are so deadly because most cancers, if they're detected early enough, they can be treated, we can get rid of it. The reason cancers are so deadly is that by the time we figure out the patient's got cancer, it's already metastasized. Anything else? Blood pressure is high, you have a headache. Infection, you have pain, you have redness, you have swelling. But when it comes to cancer, cancer is what? Painless. Pain is actually one of the last symptoms. By the time that patient has pain and they feel like something's wrong, it's metastasized. It's spread all through the body. Okay? The primary clinical manifestation is painless lymph node enlargement. Because the disease is usually disseminated when it is diagnosed, other symptoms are present depending on where the disease is spread, such as hepatomegaly with the liver, um, neurological symptoms with the CNS. Let's talk about diagnostic studies. Diagnostic studies used for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma resemble those used for Hodgkin's lymphoma. However, because non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is more often in the extranodal sites, more diagnostic studies may be done, such as MRI or lumbar puncture to rule out CNS disease. Because um, remember, we just said that the patient may have these CNS manifestations. They can do a bone marrow biopsy to determine if the bone marrow has been infiltrated, a barium enema, upper endo to visualize suspected GI involvement. Lymph node excisional biopsy establishes the cell type and pattern. So when they cut out a part of that lymph node and they do a biopsy, that's where they could see what type of cells are involved in the actual pathology of this disease, okay? Treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in involves chemo and sometimes radiation therapy. Here's a drug alert for Rituxan, one of the medications the patients will be on. For that medication, Rituxan, you're going to monitor the patient for signs of severe hypersensitivity infusion reactions especially their first infusion. And if you see a severe hypersensitivity reaction, the very first thing you're gonna do is what? Stop the infusion. Manifestation may include hypotension, bronchospasms, dysrhythmias, angioedema, and cardiogenic shock. All of these are deadly, ladies and gentlemen. Screen for a history of hepatitis because the drug may reactivate hepatitis.
The nursing care for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is similar to that of Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's largely based on managing the problems that's related to the disease, such as pain that's caused by a tumor. Maybe that tumor is compressing on another organ, spinal cord compression, tumor lysis syndrome, pancytopenia, and other side effects of therapy. Pancytopenia, pan covering everything, cyto the cells, penny a little bit of. Little bit of RBCs, patient can be anemic. Little bit of platelets, patient can have bleeding disorders or hemorrhagic disorders. Little bit of WBCs, patients at high risk for what? Infection, right? However, because non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can be more extensive and involve specific organs, such as the brain, the CNS, the spleen, the liver, GI tract, bone marrow, it is important to understand the subtype and the extent of the disease. And so that uh, bone marrow is very important and also just a full assessment on that patient. And guys, in a nutshell, that is your biggest differences between your Hodgkin's lymphoma and your non-Hodgkin's lymphoma please let me know in the comment section what you thought about this video. Very often, I know you guys ask me what book I'm teaching out of. And guys, I teach out of so many books. Let me check to see because I have no idea what book this is. Here we go. This is a book I'm teaching out of. Does it say the, there, 10th edition. So this is the book I'm teaching out of for this particular video, okay? Let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Please engage with me in the comment section. It really helps my algorithm. Don't forget to share my content on your social media platform. You guys can get audio lessons from me on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can catch me on my other social media platforms that cover various nursing topics almost every single day. TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.